Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> if anybody's in. And welcome to Behind the Mic Radio. I am your host, Dawn Mack, and so, so happy to be here with you this evening. Welcome, everyone. Hello, and I hope today has been a wonderful day for you all. It's no longer Monday, so there's a lot to be said for that, at least, and uh, so we're very, very excited about that. But um, I wanted to uh, just tell you how elated we are to have our special guest with us tonight. He is uh best known he's an accomplished actor and he is best known for his portrayal of John Abbott on the number one rated CBS daytime drama, The Young and the Restless. He has also been called by his fans and others the last great crooner of our time. It is with great honor and pleasure to welcome the one and only Jerry Douglas. Hello. Hi dear, how are you? I'm great and thank you, thank you so much for being our special guest this evening. We greatly appreciate it. Okay, well, Pam Rogers is a dear girl, and I do things that she wants me to do. She's my friend. <laughs> well, and she's a lovely, lovely <clears throat> person, and, and I really thank yep. her so much for coordinating this. Uh, kudos to Pam, and and uh, and hello to her as well. It, it, it's great having you with us. It's such an honor, and, you know, I, I want to just go ahead and, and put it out there. Uh, and, and I first want to congratulate you, and it's a little bit of a delayed congratulations, but you and the entire cast and crew of YNR for 40 outstanding years in daytime television. I mean, that is no small feat, especially in this day and time in the world yeah. of daytime television. Congratulations to all of you. I mean, that is quite an accomplishment. And I must tell you, I've been a daytime fan for just about that long. I mean, in terms of, you know, watching YNR and um, and just following the show through the years. I grew up a CBS daytime gal and, and just grew to love the show and, and still a fan to this day. So, um it's just it's a great honor to have you on the show. And well, thank you. Thank you, dear. One of the things that I wanted to ask you is, what do you think has been the success to the secret to YNR's success through the years to, to keep him on the air? I mean, they've been the number one rated daytime drama for the longest time. And, um, and you know, there's obviously their reputation precedes them with, with the many years of great storylines and great cast, you know. Um, mm-hmm. What do you feel is the secret to the success of the show? Well, it's generally speaking, when you talk about anything on television that was great, whether it's a nighttime series as far back as MASH or CIA, a CIA the CIS, what is it called? I can't think of it. You know, the series that are very yeah. big hits, you know, NCIS, mm-hmm. all of them. Uh, in our case, the man that created the show, Bill Bell, who passed away about five, six years ago, um, he was a terrific writer before he turned Days of Our Lives from almost getting kicked off the air in the 60s into a very successful show. And then he created Young and Restless uh, when he had the opportunity to have his own show uh, in 1973. And he had great devotion. Uh, he didn't want to be a movie producer or nighttime television he loved what he called the serials, which goes way back to when it was first radio. And he, you know, remembered it well. But it's the daytime series, the everyday series having to write a 75-page script daily and constantly weave 25, 30 actors in various storylines. He was really brilliant at that. He's probably one of the two to three most gifted people that have ever tried to write. And when he passed away, uh, we the show has gone through at least five or six or seven writers in the past ten years. And I think Bill stopped writing somewhere in the late 90s. So let's just say at least uh, the last 15 years there's been at least that many, five or six writers. They just don't last. It's a, it's a demanding job. It's a very... Maybe the most demanding job in television that there is. 
But that's the reason for its success, is how good the writing is. The actors have been together a long time. A a lot of us have been there 30 years, Gene Cooper even longer, uh, Melody Thomas even a little longer than me, three or four years. So when you have that kind of roots in a show, that's what makes it so great. Yeah, I mean, I, it's just amazing because as I've grown up watching Daring and the Restless, you know, I feel like it's just been a part of my life, my my family, and to see the same characters, you know, year in, year out, and, and just watching them grow and change, you know, it, not only with storylines, but just as they've developed as characters. I mean, it's just been amazing the talent that is on that cast and, and how things have just continued to just, escalate and be what it is for one r it's just a great 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 show and um and and it's just amazing the writing like you say i think he in my opinion is probably the best writer out there he just he just had a magical way of writing storylines and and they just came to life he came to life on air you know in like yeah. in no other way it was just amazing what he could do and it you can it's so greatly missed i mean oh my gosh <laughs> the bell family is incredible anyway um as a unit and uh the bill bell was just you know he was just phenomenal um well, he was a master he was a master yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, you know, you, you spoke of, of many people on the show who have been there 30 years or more, and, and you're no exception. I mean, you, you came aboard YNR in 82, and, uh, yeah. and you know, con- congratulations on that because that, again, is, is no small feat to be with one show for that long period of time. And um, and how did the role of YNR, John Abbott, come, come to be for you? How did that all happen? Well, I made it brief. I never did a daytime show. I worked from, in California, I would say, from the late 60s when I really broke through, 67 or 8. I started to get fortunate and get some good parts and uh, became a decent enough actor that they would have me back a lot. And I started to build a career, and I did three pilots at different times. One of them was very disappointing. It was like the Waltons and they loved the pilot at Universal, but the network didn't. They didn't know what to do with that kind of show. It was a very family-oriented show, so there were a lot of disappointments like that. And uh, then I was getting into an age where I couldn't play, and I played a lot of heavies. I never played nice men. Once in a while, I play a police officer or something like that. But those parts in the pilot, I played a a veterinarian doctor in New England, and that was the one I did around 1970. So all of that experience was such that I never had any interest in a daytime show. I was doing as well as they could, uh, and maybe better in some ways financially, by freelancing. And uh, any one of the pilots would have made me a nighttime star, but that didn't happen. And then uh, toward the early, early 80s, it, got, it was getting more difficult for me. I'm doing a radio show that you're on. My wife, Kimberly Douglas, just walked in the car where we're sitting. Uh, you know her from the Ellen Show and many, many others that she does. Uh, so basically what happened is I had heard about it from other fellows that I would meet on readings or things. We're all friends in the business when you've all been in it a while. My agent called me. I went over to his office one day. He said, I want you to read this. I read it, and I thought it was a movie script. It was so well written. And I went in and uh, met them uh, uh, sometime the following week. I think I was shooting an episodic show. I was guest starring on a show that week and went over there, read for the producer, and then came back and tested a couple of times. And it worked, and I was very anxious because I had never done one. But it's uh, you get into the technique of it. It's like doing a play every day, and that's basically what happened. And it's just been an astounding, long, long run. Never, never expected it. And as they say, the rest is history. I mean, you know, it's and 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 you know, and and I can say this because it just it just seems to be the right thing to say that there is nobody else out there that I could have seen playing John Abbott all these years. <laughs> I mean. For, for me personally, you know, your character on YNR has always been that stoic character that just was kind of, it's kind of like, you know, Gene Cooper and, and the Chancellor role. I mean, it's just the glue. There are just certain characters 
that's the glue that holds, you know, the unit together. And it's almost like whatever you said, just you can take it to the bank. You know, your character was always, he's always been that way. And and now, well, you know, a, um, go ahead. No, he was a reflection of Bill Bell, too. Bill Bell mm. put a lot of himself in that character. And his family, his three kids, and John had three kids, so... There was a lot of it that came from his his creativity, yeah. That made you oh, feel wow. that way, the way he wrote. Yeah, and sure. it, it it was it worked, and it's it's been very convincing. And I know, you know, now you know now that John Abbott is, you know, he's died, but he's come back so many times, you know, to visit um, from the grave, if you will. And and I know one our fans have been thrilled to see you back on screen uh, since that time, you know, off and on, and and um. You know, but it, I have to tell you, it really is a different world for the Abbott family without John at the helm every day, you know, kind of steering yep. Jack in the right direction and, and keeping him straight and giving him that. But it's nice now, the kind of the way, you know, they bring you back and, and he can kind of still tap Jack on the shoulder and say, you know, job well done or, you know, or give some pause to think. So it's nice that they've still been able to integrate that, um, you know, and that it was never a character that's been written off. I don't know that the fans yeah, well, would allow that. <laughs> well, they tried, but no, it took me, uh, I mean, Jill, our new producer, actually is the one that brought me back on a more consistent basis, and it's been fun. And it does work better for the show because the presence of the father is there, even as a ghost a lot with Jack, and that makes you feel the, the uh, consistency of the family, you know. Mm-hmm. So. I couldn't agree with you more. I think it's good. I think it's good for the show. So. Oh yeah, and and one thing I was I was curious about. Why do you think it is that your character has been so popular with fans through the years? I mean, fans love you. I mean, they they love the Castle but there's just something about that whole John Abbott character that fans just you know it, it, he really is a true father figure. I mean, not only for his children on the show, but just for viewers like myself. I mean, you're, you yeah. played it so well. Well, I appreciate that, and thank you. I think John represents the quality of a father that everybody would like, and many people don't have the good fortune of having, as well as that kind of husband as well. I think that basically is what made him so attractive to people. You know, his integrity and his uh, his reaching out to help rather than take. He's, he's a giving man, you know, a very giving man. And that was mm-hmm. easy for me to identify with, you know. No, no, I've never had that problem. I've always been very close with my own family and have a great, great marriage and a uh, successful one with Kimberly uh, for the same reasons, you know. Oh, yeah. And, and are there any aspects to the character of John Abbott's personality that mirror you in any way? <laughs> well, my wife's sitting next to me, so I would only say, she says, is there anything about John Abbott that's a lot like me? And then she likes to introduce me to people saying he's nothing like John Abbott, but she's doing it, she's doing it for fun. And uh, I think there's a lot that we have in common. Uh, there's no question about that. Uh, his sense of decency, but mostly... You can put on my grave, I will not lie to people. I won't tell you something that will hurt you because that's cruel truth. But mm-hmm. loving truth, never. Never fib, and neither mm-hmm. is John. And there are that's certain right. elements that are easy were easy for me to capture in that character. The minute I read him, I could identify very clearly. And as a matter of fact, when I read him, I had custody of my then when I got the part, he was 12 years old son who was living with me, and my daughter was 16 or almost 17, living with me, going to school, and John Abbott was alone raising his three children. So the identification was huge. Wow. It's just those little bits and pieces, you know, that that maybe possibly viewers never knew, uh, you know, about you personally. And But I think that's the reason why your character has been so successful, because and it's been so believable because it's been, you know, it, it's funny because daytime drama fans, as you know, are some of the most passionate fans in the world of yeah, all you know, they are. televised yeah. fans. And, and you know, 
I really am interested to get your, um, you know, your thoughts on why do you think it is that sometimes because the passion of daytime drama fans, why do you think it is that they, oh, that's okay, um, that they have a hard time separating the character from the actor? Um, because you, you're in our lives five days a week, you know, for the most part. And it's, well, I think the it's reason sometimes reason difficult. That is, in nighttime television, you do an episode in a day. The only thing that's consistent is the, the the police department's two leads or whoever they use as core people. In daytime, you're watching a real story develop just like it does in life that sometimes takes months. So you really can live through it because you can almost say to yourself, if you're a fan, God, I almost experienced that myself or I did experience it myself. And Bill Bell was really quite brilliant at knowing how to find those storylines that would, people could grab onto. It's, it's all in the writing. It's all in the writing. And, and that's what does it. And it's the, <clears throat> pardon me, it's the format of daytime that, it can, that we used to take months developing stories. I don't think they do it quite as much today, but they still will take weeks and weeks to work out a storyline uh, with Jack, like in the recent shows we've done, having a drug problem and fighting through it, all of that stuff. A lot of people have had the same kind of problem, not necessarily drugs, but weight, losing weight, fighting weight, all kinds of things that people struggle with in their life. And that's, I think it makes it very identifiable. Yeah, and, and it's, you bring up a good point because I know that, you know, comparatively <laughs> to, say, a decade or more ago, the storylines today, they kind of, you know, the daytime shows kind of get through storylines a lot quicker than they used to. I mean, it used to be when I was out of school for the summer and I'd watch a storyline, it would kind of stay, it would unfold as the summer progressed. Now but, they're a lot quicker and there's a lot quicker <laughs> resolve. Do you think that because society and life for, for viewers is just so fast paced and they, you know, that's kind of sped up to kind of keep pace with, with the track of people and, and viewership? Well, I think life is much quicker today than it was 30 years ago when I started. You have the Internet, you have the Instagram, the, the Twitter, all of the, of the social aspects of, of computer world uh, are so quick. I mean, things happen and they're instantly known throughout the world, the mind is this country. And the other thing is economically, daytime is struggling a little bit more than it ever did before, getting the viewership they had. Uh, when I was in our prime period, and then we would get rating points as 8, 9, 10%, even go to 12 in the summer when college kids would get out of high school, kids that loved the show and watched it. Today, you don't have that audience because of the Internet, because of their interest in it. Uh, my son, my youngest boy, Kim, and my, our, our baby boy is 15, and it's texting to death. They're, they're on that phone mm -hmm. all the time. So because yeah. of those elements, that's why the stories are a little quicker. They move quicker. They think that that's the retentive ability of the audience. Is it has to be quicker today. And if you're older and you remember it the old way, it, it just wouldn't work today. So, And maybe they're right <laughs> because we've sustained good ratings uh, for the last five or six years that I can remember that have done very well. you got to forgive oh, yeah. me. i got a little sore throat if I'm coughing. <laughs> so, oh, uh, bless you. It's okay. Is there anything else you'd like to discuss? Well, sure. Um, I sure. I wanted to um, to ask you what some of your fondest memories are of of being on Y and R. Either you know, be it favorite storylines involving your character, or just being part of the show for thirty plus years. Well, I would say the, the, the most enjoyable period was when I first started because they put the Abbots together, and we worked together for about eight years, and we were very close socially. You know, I was single. Uh, the man that played Jack, Terry Lester, was single. The girls that played uh, Ashley and Tracy were. So we used to meet a lot in the weekends. We sometimes go to Terry's house. He had a piano, and he was a pianist, and sing together. It, we had a we had a very close relationship, and it showed. The yeah, Abbots actually drove that show, the hour show, for its beginnings to get it to the success it did. And then they developed 
another family with uh, Eric Braden and Melody, which are the Newmans, and they were like the dichotomy that battled each other. And it was uh, it was the best time. I would say the 80s up to the middle 90s, which is when Bill Bell kept writing. I think he got sick somewhere around 95 or 6. And then for me, it was never the same. Never the same. Oh, yeah. Never had a writer that was of his caliber, of his gifts. And that's just the way it is in life. But it was still good. And they were good. They did their best. And they did good work. But Bill Bell was a genius at it. And that's the difference. You can't. That's that's a gift God gives you. You, you have no no uh, discussion on that. Mm-hmm. And and honestly, from a viewer standpoint, and I think I speak for a lot of fans out there. You know, I think fans have greatly missed that writing of Bill Bell. I mean, the show is still a great show, but that there was just something, like I said earlier, magical about the way he wrote stories and told stories <laughs> and how the actors played it out. Um, yeah. It it really it really did you know, grab you and pull you in and you couldn't stop watching. I mean, it's just, but I think daytime as a whole has changed so much, you know, um, over the last decade or so anyway. And it's, you know, a big part of it has, from the end of the rest of I think has been that missing link of Bill Bell, but also, you know, just the, the daytime television as a whole has changed. You know, we've lost some daytime serials that were, you know, longest running and, and just have, you know, had their last curtain call. We've got a couple that are coming back and headed to the internet. I mean, it's interesting how the dynamic of all of that has changed, and uh, yeah, you know, and how it continues to evolve. No, I mean they're going to try to bring back all my children. I don't know if it'll work on the internet because internet is speed, moment to moment, quickly. Right now, yesterday, it isn't anything that's going to linger a long time. I hope it works, but I don't know if it will. You know, they're trying to bring back something that worked ten years ago. I don't think it'll work today. I don't know. It's hard to say. That's it's my really guess. Hard it be, um, yeah. it it's really hard to say. Yeah. I know my kid won't watch it. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's going to be. I think it's going to be hard, a hard call to make because you know, if you think about those long time, you know, AMC and One Life to Live fans who you know, grew so accustomed to watching those shows, just like, you know, anybody watching Young and the Restless or any of the others that have been longtime fans, yeah. that's a transition that's going to be difficult, I think, for some um, to make just because yeah. it won't be the same, you know, because it's not on a network channel, you know, and, and yeah. that's, that's the big factor. Well, well, it's one of those we'll have to wait and see, I guess. Um, yeah, it's going to be on the web. We'll see if people will go to that site and watch. We'll see. That's yeah. right. That's right. You never one know. One thing I want to... That's right. Um, one thing I wanted to talk to you about um, that doesn't get talked about very much aside of you is, is you have a musical side, and and you've been called by your fans and others one of the last great crooners, as I said in the intro. And how does that make you feel? I mean, I have listened to your music, Jerry, and it's, it's phenomenal. I mean, I have to agree. It, you are kind of like one of the last great creators. It's, I'm, you know, that's kind of like an untapped secret to Jerry Douglas. And all the years I watched you online, or it wasn't until recently that I learned that you have this creator side to you. And I'm like, wow, you know, I wish you had been doing this on Y and R. I mean, this is great. Well, we so, did a little bit. I used to sing a couple of times with uh, the girl that played Gina Petty Weaver. We did a mm-hmm. couple of things together, <clears throat> but. I always sang. I started that way. I love it. It's enjoyable. And I did that CD that you're talking about. Um, that was done about six, seven years ago. And we used to go out and do some dates, but it's it's very difficult to do that today. Uh, the venues are not what they were to work. And uh, uh, it just I, I just have other things I'm interested in doing that would prevent me from doing it if I was going out every weekend to do dates, you know. But I do love mm-hmm. singing. It's a great expression. And uh, singing lyrics is like telling a story musically like you do it when you do uh, the, the words of an actor. You know, it's very similar. But thank you. That's very sweet of you to say that you like my singing. You're the well, only I one. Do. That, <laughs> see, I finally got somebody that likes my singing. Well, oh, I and do my like mother, who my mother's my mother's in heaven right now, so she was the only other one that liked it. So at least I got two people. Yeah. Well, I you're you're very very funny. I I do I love that style of music anyway. I love you know anything that is has a jazz kind of you know big band. I mean I love that whole classic jazz standard um, period of music. I'm a big 
music buff anyway, but uh-huh. but um, I was like, who knew, you know? Uh, but you're actually very good, and um, I, I, I would just love to see you put out at least another album um, in your time. That would be well, awesome. Well, yeah, but, the um, problem you have with that, you know, in order to do an album, you have to sell them a lot. I mean, the, the audience for mm-hmm. that kind of music has gotten very narrow and small. Yeah. So, you know, we sold a lot of... Uh, our album the first year or two. We went to Canada, did some tours there. And then uh, I had used to have a website that sold it, and they just weren't moving any, so it was silly. We just ended it and uh, figured it was fun and enjoyed it, and that was that. I still have a lot yeah. of CDs, you know, but have you have you, uh, you have one? Do you have the CD? I do not have the CD, but I have well, I've gone to your site many, uh, many times, and and just listen to your me. I love it. It's just well, There's I'll try to get that. it to you. Uh, my girl knows your number, doesn't she? She has contact <laughs> she with you. She certainly does. She certainly All does. Right, well, and uh, I'll talk to her and send her a couple and have her send one to you. Okay. Oh, you're so kind. Oh, thank you so much. I, that that is very special. Thank you so much. Well, before we let you go, have you got a moment or two to take a call or two? And uh, you have somebody calling in. Yeah, I have someone calling said? in. All yeah, right, well, yeah, let's do that, and, and then we'll try to wrap it up because we've got to go yeah, pick sure. up my, my boy at school shortly. I'd appreciate oh, okay. it. Oh, okay. Sure, sure. Right, go okay. ahead. Hello, you're on with Gary. Well, hello, Mr. Hello? Douglas. How are you? Okay, good. And who is calling? Oh, come on. You don't recognize his voice? <laughs> it's your girl. <laughs> yeah, I know. Listen, uh, I have to send you a couple of CDs for this lovely girl and her oh, radio Danya. show. Oh, Donya, she's a sweetheart. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I what? Yeah, I know, I know. My wife's telling him I'm on live. Did she think I thought we were on movie screen? She's yelling at me. Kimberly's I want to ask you a me. question. What? I want to ask you a question, Jerry. Since you've done acting and music, is there something that you haven't done yet that you would like to still do? If there was a great movie script that was, and the director was an exceptionally gifted guy, and it was funded well enough to do well, not necessarily that you make a fortune doing it, that would be fun to do. That I would look forward to doing. Yeah, to do another TV show. I've done it. I've done so many of them. It would be okay. It's fun. I remember did Cold Case a few years ago, and it was a wonderful part, very demanding, and I enjoyed doing it very much. They were happy. I was, but not the same as a new original film that would have some originality to it. That would be exciting to do. Okay. And that's that's my answer, dear. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Don, do you but have a I, Skype call? I thought somebody just sent me a message saying they were on Skype. Uh, yeah, no, I, I do not, actually. No, I do not. Okay, maybe they hung up then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I haven't seen anyone. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Pam. Well, Jerry, thanks a lot for doing this interview with Don. I appreciate it. You're very welcome. And Kim says hello to you. She's sitting here. Hi, Kim. Yeah. How are you? Hi, Pam. Good. How are you? I'm doing fine. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm glad you two chatted. And uh, <laughs> I wish you luck, and I will, Pammy. I'll send her your uh, – I have to get your address. I'll call you and get the, your home address again. I know I have it somewhere, I think. And I'll mail you a couple of CDs, a few, so you can give them to her, okay? Okay, Don, you got to give me your you? address. Huh? I will. I'll get Don? That, Pam, I'll get, that over, yeah. I'll get that over to you, Pam, right after the show. How about that? Yeah, All okay. right, you guys put it together, and we'll do it, okay? And thank you, and good luck with your show. I hope you have great success with it, dear. Thank you so very much, Jerry. It's been a pleasure speaking with you today, and and uh, we look forward to seeing more and more of you on YNR. Thank you so All much right, for your then. time, sir. Okay. Take care, sir. But, All righty. All right, well, be, be well, and bye-bye, girls. Nice talking. All right. Okay. Bye-bye. bye-bye. Well, ah, what a what a true gentleman. I mean, Jerry Douglas is an absolute delight. He is, you know, he is just as much a gentleman as you heard. Um, 
as he is on Lynar. And I love when we can talk to characters live like this and talk to the actual person and not, you know, the character that they portray. And it's it's always nice to um, to hear, you know, their point of view on things and to just hear the person and not the actor so much. And just a sweet man, very sweet. And he's sending me his CD. I can't believe it. I'm so excited. He has great music, and, I, and my mom is listening tonight, I'm sure, and she's probably going, good, I want one, I want one. Mom, I'll send you one. Um, but in any event, we want to thank Jerry Douglas for being our very special guest this evening. Um, he was he was very limited on time, so if you called in to speak with him, I do apologize we did not get to your call, but um, at some point in the very near future, we'll try to have him back just to take calls, um, to take some fan calls, and uh, do less interview and more fan calls, and so we will try to put that together. And a big thanks to Pam for helping put this together tonight and coordinating this. This was great. Thank you so much. And to all the listeners who um, tuned in for this, we greatly appreciate you being here. If you're brand new to our show, this is Behind the Mic Radio, and I am your host, Dawn Mack, and we're so glad to have you with us. Welcome aboard. We hope that this will not be your last time with us. We would love to have you visit any time. And, um, and just to give everybody a quick um, uh, rundown, coming up on uh, Thursday evening, if you are a Brady Bunch fan, if you grew up watching the Mighty Six, as I like to call them, the Brady Bunch, we have... Uh, Jan Brady, Eve Plum, she will be with us on Thursday evening at 7 p.m. Eastern right here, live in studio, and we will be doing about a 30-minute interview with her. So I would suggest if you're you know, Brady Bunch fan, you want to call in and speak with her, try to call before the show kicks off at 7 and try to get in queue so that uh, one, we can, you know, we can find out who's calling, and two, we can be ready to have the calls ready to roll when we start taking those. And so E Plum, Dan Brady, uh, she will be here 7 p.m. Eastern on Thursday evening. And so with that, that is going to wrap our show for this evening. Thank you again to everyone who tuned in, and thanks also to our very special guest, Jerry Douglas. And with that, I'll say have a great evening, good night, and we'll see you back here right again real soon. Thank you. Good night. Thanks for listening to tonight's show. You can connect to Behind the Mic Radio on Twitter at BT Mike Radio and on Facebook at Behind the Mic Radio. Check out our website at BehindTheMicRadio.com. Also, follow us right here on Blog Talk Radio where you can stay up to date on all upcoming shows. Every episode is available for immediate download upon the conclusion of each broadcast and as always on iTunes. Thank you for joining us. Tonight's show has been brought to you by One Taste of Main Street Cake Shop Baked from scratch custom made cakes and cupcakes And you'll be hooked Every cake is made to order with only the finest and freshest ingredients This is no ordinary bakery Cakes are never pre-made Main Street Cake Shop is in demand Having provided cakes and cupcakes for numerous prestigious events Bridal fairs and venues Owned and operated by April Murray, she has garnered many awards for not only her exquisite cake designs, but also for their incredible taste. If you're looking for a cake for any occasion, or cupcakes in a variety of flavors, then Main Street Cake Shop is the place. Visit them on the web at MainStreetCakeShop.com.